Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا And those who had taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be taken in groups to the gates of Jannah. The distance between two shutters from the gates of Jannah are the distance of 40 years in travel. Massive gates. But as big as these gates are, there will come upon them a day in which it will be so crowded with the believers who will be entering into paradise. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. And when they reach the gates, they will hear the guardians of the gates, the angels saying, Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you. Tibetum, you've succeeded. Fadkhuluha khalideen, so enter to stay in forever. Knowing that Allah has made us amongst those who He has granted His mercy to enter into paradise. Waqalu alhamdulillah. They praise Allah. Alladhi sadaqana wa'dah. Who has fulfilled His promise to us. وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضَ نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ And we will inherit the land of Jannah where we can go wherever we want in it. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنَّا الْحَزَنِ إِنَّ رَبَّنَا لَغَفُورٌ شَكُورٌ They will say and praise be to Allah who has removed from us الْحَزَنِ all sadness and sorrow is gone. The one who has granted us the home of permanent abode from his bounty and we will not have any weariness of mind nor fatigue that will touch us therein. And as you enter Jannah, you hear a crier call out and he says, Ya Ahl al-Jannah, you will live and you will never die and you will be healthy forever and you will never have to worry about being sick and you will be young and you will never grow old and you will always be in a constant state of bounty you'll never have to worry about any loss the Prophet he says you will be 30 or 33 years old the peak of your strength and your health and you will never grow past that Allah says that when they enter Jannah, they will be adorned with the adornments of Jannah from bracelets of gold and pearls and their garments, their clothing will be of silk. What's there to eat? And so a Jewish rabbi, he came to the Messenger of Allah and he was testing him to see if he had knowledge from the knowledge that he had. And it was a long hadith. And Bukhari and Muslim, and amongst the questions he asked the Messenger of Allah is, what will be their first meal in paradise? And so the Messenger of Allah he said, Ziyadatu kabadin noon, which may not sound like the first choice you would have. He said that their first meal will be from the liver of a whale. But this is a whale of Jannah. And what will be their food after that? A steer, an ox from Jannah, which used to eat from the vegetation of Jannah will be slaughtered for them and they will have its meats. What will be their drink? A drink from Sal Sabil, a spring in paradise that Allah talks about in the Quran. So you will have been fed with the beautiful food of Jannah and the drinks of Jannah, and then your instincts will guide you to your property. Prophet Muhammad says, you will be more aware and more familiar with your home in Jannah than you will be when you're home in this world. And the palaces of Jannah are remarkable. Gold and silver and emeralds and rubies, a massive palace. The door of the palace will be opened and he says that it's made of a hollowed pearl. The roof, the doors, the locks, and even the keys are all made from this pearl. And then you see your spouse, your wife or your husband, and you just freeze. And because Jannah is eternity, you could spend 10 years just gazing at the beauty that Allah has created for you. The beauty of your wife or the beauty of your husband. And everybody will be married in Jannah. There's nobody single in Jannah. If you were married in this world, you'll be joined together in the hereafter, inshaAllah. To give you an idea of the beauty of the woman of Jannah, the Prophet says in a hadith, he says, if a woman from the woman of paradise were just to look towards this dunya, the space between the paradise and this dunya would be filled with lights. And the cloth that is on her head is worth more than all of this world and whatever it contains. 
So you see your wife and you see your palace and you see the decor, cushions and carpets and thrones and sofas and beds and the like. And then you want to eat some more, you can eat some more, whatever you want is given for you, it's there for you. And then you decide, let's go out, let's explore. So you walk out of your home and right away, you are greeted with a beautiful smell. And so you're wondering, where is this smell coming from? And you realize the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, it's soil has a scent of misk. لا يرون فيها شمسا ولا زمهريرا. You won't find it too hot, nor will it be too cold. Perfect weather. Prophet Muhammad says you won't have to use the bathroom, and you don't have to have nasal congestion or allergies. You won't have to spit. And he says, and if you sweat, it's going to be the smell of misk. And then you hear the rivers of Jannah. You hear water flowing outside of your property, so you say, let's go see what this is. مثل الجنة التي وعد المتقون فيها أنهار من ماء غير آس. The description of the paradise of Allah is given to the muttaqin. There is four flowing rivers, the first of which is described as water that never gets contaminated. And rivers of milk whose taste will never change. And rivers of wine that are sweetness to those who drink it. Neither does it intoxicate nor does it give you a headache. And rivers of purified honey. So you go to your rivers that are flowing beneath beneath your gardens. You perhaps drink from one river and another and another and each time you drink, every time you eat some fruit or you taste something from Jannah, you say, this looks like what I tasted before, but every time you taste it has a new and better taste than the time before, Allahu Akbar. And you see the trees of Jannah, you will see massive trees in Jannah. The Prophet says, a rider can ride through its shade for 100 years and not pass it by. And he he says that, the trunks of the trees of Jannah are made of gold. And as you're walking by Jannah and you see the believers and you see your family members because Allah says those who believe from your family will be joined together with you. Your children, if perhaps they were better than you and you're afraid you won't be with them or your parents were better than you and you're afraid you won't be with them. If you both make it to Jannah, Allah will raise your whole family together to the one who had the highest level and you will be with your family in Jannah. So you see your son and you see, mashallah, he's wearing beautiful clothes and you want to have the color he's wearing. So Ibn Abbas, he was asked about the clothes of Jannah and he says the clothes of Jannah come from the trees of Jannah whose fruits are like pomegranates. When you wish to have a piece of clothing, it will come to you. It will open and you will find 70 different colors of clothes. You could choose whichever one you want. And then you see something very interesting. You're walking through Jannah, the smells, the sights, the sounds, the believers. And then you see someone flying on a horse. And not only that, the horse is made of rubies. And maybe he waves to you and he says, Salaamu Alaikum, I'm from the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the man of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asks the Messenger of Allah, he says, Oh Messenger of Allah, I just love horses. So are there going to be horses in Jannah? The Messenger of Allah told him that if Allah enters you into Jannah, Allah will give you a horse made of red rubies that has two wings. You can fly with it wherever you want to Jannah. You want to go visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the horse? Go ahead. Go to Kawthar? Go ahead. Go to the MBI, Go to the Salihin? Fly wherever you want. Allah says they will have whatever they want. They will stay there in forever. And everything Allah has mentioned about Jannah, the relationship to the stuff on this dunya is just the name. But when we go there, it will be something completely beyond our imagination. There's something that's above and beyond all of that. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was talking to Jibreel Alayhi Salaam and he was telling him about Yawmul Jum'ah, the day of Friday and how great of a day it is. And then he says that in the Akhirah, we refer to Friday as the day of increase. And so he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why do you call it the day of increase? So the Jibreel Alayhi tells him, your Lord Allah has taken a valley in Jannah that's more fragrant than white musk. And on the day of Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends from the highest level upon his chair. And then the, his chair will be surrounded by pulpits of lights. And the prophets of Allah will come and they will sit on these mimbars of lights. And then he says, then the kursi will be surrounded by thrones of gold. And the siddiqoon and the shuhada, the martyrs will come and they will sit upon it. And then he says, all of the people of Jannah will come and they'll sit on the sand dunes of Jannah. And no one will think the other to be higher than the other. And then he says, and at that moment, when the scene has been set and all the people of Jannah are sitting and waiting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appear and they will look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face. And he will say, just like when the people of Jannah enter Jannah, they will say, Alhamdulillah, ladhi sadaqana wa'dah. Praise be to Allah who fulfilled his promise to us. Allah will look at them and he himself will tell them, Ana ladhi sadaqtukum wa'di. 
I am the one who fulfilled my promise to you. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I have completed my favor upon you. هَذَا مَحَلُّ كَرَامَتِي فَاسْأَلُونِي This is the place for my generosity, so ask me whatever you want. And so they will say, Oh Allah, we ask for your pleasure. And Allah will tell them, My pleasure is what granted you this place in Jannah and allowed you to experience my generosity, so ask me. So everyone from Jannah will ask whatever they want of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until everyone is done. And then the hadith says, and at that moment after everybody has satiated all their desires, secrets will be open to them. Allah will open for them what no eye has ever seen and no ear has ever heard and no mind has ever even fathomed. That's the greatest joy to see the face of Allah in Jannah. The greatest joy the people of Jannah will have is to see the face of Allah. So I'll end by saying what Allah says in the Quran, For this reward, let those who are going to work start to work. That's our home. Allah has already reserved our place there for us. We just have to work to get it. And we ask Allah the dua that the Messenger of Allah used to ask, Allahumma inna nas'aluka ladhatan nadari ila wajhika al-kareem wa shawqa ila liqa'ik. Oh Allah, we ask you for the sweetness of looking upon your face and to the desire, the longing to meet you. Allahumma ameen.